I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear calling on my ear The Son of God discloses Early on the first morning of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away. So she ran to get Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out for the tomb. The two of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look and saw the linen wrapping lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, saw and believed. For as they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over and she looked to the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting at the body of Jesus, where he had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said, They've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they've laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said, Teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the heavenly parent. But go to my siblings and say to them, I am ascending to my Abba and yours, to my God and to your God. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Mary Magdalene went to announce to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and I have heard all that he has said. May God grant us wisdom and understanding to this text. The 2020 Easter motto for some of my colleagues and I brightened our spirits a bit. The sanctuary is empty. The pews are empty and so is the grave. It's obvious and it's wonderful. Happy Easter all. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Even during the days when the church of people are scattered here and there, gathered together apart, we are trusting in the hope of the resurrection. None of us has lived through a pandemic that has included such physical distancing and worldwide isolation. Usually in moments of crisis, we go to the meeting house. We've gathered there many times to find comfort in one another and to engage faith that moves us to acts of justice. Our time of community is different here on Easter Sunday. In our recorded service, we will be celebrating in vignettes from various venues. Our beach sunrise service is the site of the meditation this year. No wearing colorful Easter clothes or Easter egg ties. 
by even proper church ladies. have had to exchange their Easter finest for something like this. So here we are in 2020. The fact that the very state of Easter celebrations have been pressed into unknown territory leaves us a bit unnerved sometimes. And yet, like the first Easter, we speculate about the journey to come. What will future days hold? How will we grieve for the lives lost? And how will we live in gratitude for the lives saved? On this day, many pause because we hold close the dear Easter memories from long ago, as well as the traditions that we are foregoing right now. Those bittersweet reco recollections of family gatherings that walk us through the years, soothing us, are comforting as we remember laughter and people gathered around the table interjecting praise of an aunt's potato salad or an uncle's baked bread. And what about the joy of childhood Easter egg hunts? And then later, hiding the eggs for family or neighborhood friends. And then again, maybe today, we are missing what we longed for. The family, the table, the traditions that we never had. This morning, isolated in homes, calling, texting, Zooming, we are making connections anew. And yet, most of us are missing someone or something. Who do you miss today? What are you missing? If you can, hit pause right here and think about, ponder, pray, and write down who and what you're missing. Allow the grief to be named. You are not alone in the feeling. I've been told by even my most introverted friends that this amount of time of being together, apart, is challenging. So take a moment. Who or what are you missing on this Resurrection Sunday? More than 100,000 people across the globe have died to the COVID-related deaths. 20,000 in the U.S. and as in Connecticut, we're uncertain of our numbers, but we know they continue to rise. Even some who we know. That makes being together apart, apart together this Easter, particularly difficult. The fact that we cannot hug those outside our homes or hug those who are hurting or injured or lonely or hug one another, go sit with someone in the hospital or be with those who are quarantined or even walk close with our friends causes an odd eruption of sorrow to bubble up. An unsettledness of spirit brings waves of grief. We need to connect. We need to comfort and we need to be comforted. One way to find this connection through our physical distancing may be in reading chapter 4 in the book of Philippians. It reminds us to rejoice in God and to trust that the peace of God will find us as we lean into our relationship with Christ. Let us pray for one another as we grieve deaths and separations, uncertainty, and as we seek peace. Through this period, we begin to touch the Holy Week story of Jesus and the disciples. When we think of the scripture's backstory and today's reading, we can imagine the confusion of the disciples. One of the inner circle betrayed Jesus, their rabbi, their teacher, and most of his followers had to seek protection and practice isolation. After he was rested, it was a really scary time for them. And the women who were thought of as property took risk and they stepped out to be at the cross. They stepped out in danger to walk with him. The fact that the women, the first evangelists, went to the tomb speaks volumes to their courage, their faith, and their will. 
they responded immediately when Jesus told them to go and proclaim to the other disciples, their brothers in Christ, what they had witnessed. Peace for all the followers probably felt elusive. They didn't know what would happen next and they felt out of control. Some of our journey may feel more akin to their journey now. Maybe we understand them a little bit better. For odd times are upon us. Anxiety lurks and the reality of one of our most guided thoughts, the idea that we can control everything, comes to light and is but an illusion. Disciples, followers of Christ, Easter people, and once betrayed by a virus. Isolated and uncertain of where we are to go from here. How do we make connections and deepen our spiritual lives without being in inhabiting the same space? It does seem that the stone that has locked us into lives of excessiveness, busyness, and certainty has been rolled away. Maybe now we can more clearly look in the empty tomb and view the places, the containers, and the institutions in which parts of us, individually and collectively, have died. Then with courage, we can choose to emerge and see God in a new way. This different year, birthed out of necessity and sorrow, has provided us wider lens and a greater vision. Easter teaches us the opportunities of and for resurrection are plentiful. Hope is alive. Love conquers all manner of death. Sharing Resurrection Sunday, especially this one, with a beloved seeking and searching church family and community, however the connection is possible, is a gift. May the comfort of blessing, the joy of Easter, and the opportunities that are out there bring us together with peace in Christ. Remember, the sanctuary may be empty, the pews may be empty, but so is the grave. Happy Easter, everyone. Amen.